excellent generator is running the entire house I know I have the windows open but we turned on both the air cons anyways the fridge kicked on because it's been off for a couple hours uh, turned on multiple fans and all the lights and generator is not fluctuating at all so it's 100% running the whole house this is great to see Hey everyone, it's me again. I am here to talk about the importance of having backup power in the Philippines. And I'm doing that because I live out in the Philippines province. And when I say that, you can see behind me, I mean, I clearly, I live out in the province. I'm an hour and a half away from a Dunkin' Donuts, a McDonald's, a Starbucks, or anything like that. So if you're new to the channel, my name's Corey. My wife's name is Raquel. We moved over to the Philippines from Chicago. Uh, we had a five plus year plan. Uh, she is originally born and raised from the Philippines so she knows the environment very well. I am starting this at the end of my driveway for a reason. So the reason is to give you an example of the importance of having backup power is looking at this tree which is at the end of my driveway and then we're going to walk over to my house. My house runs off of solar if you haven't watched one of my solar videos or one of my house videos. However, solar is not actually your backup plan and when i say that a lot of people think oh we'll just get extra batteries well yeah that sounds great but looking at this tree is the reason why i wanted to discuss this because we're located in the philippines we have tropical storms okay we have typhoons we have earthquakes technically we have quite a few active volcanoes i don't have any around me luckily however this is an example of something at the end of my driveway so when people talk about having extra batteries or using that or relying on that for your backup power for your solar, that's not always a very good source. I had friends that had solar. One of them got hit with a tree like this on his roof. He lost half of his solar panels, which means what? Well, it didn't matter how many backup batteries he had, he didn't have any power. So I knew another guy, he was about 20 minutes away, half of his solar panels got ripped off of his roof during the typhoon Odette, which didn't happen too long ago. So what does that mean? Well, he had a great inverter, he had a battery bank, and it didn't matter because he lost his solar panel. On top of that, there was uh, another gentleman, I didn't really know him very well, but during the uh, typhoon, his inverter was fried. So he had a stack of solar panels on his roof. He had a large lithium battery bank and he couldn't charge them. So the grid was down for almost a month where he lived. He didn't have any power, but yet he had solar panels on his roof with a battery bank, but there was nothing he could do. That's the reason why to me, having a backup battery is a great option. However, the battery is not actually your backup. And when I say that, if you're pulling from your battery every day and you're charging it during the day, that's your primary power source. It's not actually your backup plan, that's your, that's your primary power. So again, if you lose your solar panels, if your inverter gets fried, if a tree like this lands on it, it doesn't matter how many batteries you have. It just doesn't, I hate to say it, it just, it doesn't help you. And don't get me wrong, I love solar. My house has solar, everyone knows that, or if you've watched one of the videos, I love solar. However, that's not a reliable backup plan during things like a tropical storm or a typhoon. I hate to say it, but if my house gets hit, which it did during Typhoon Odette, maybe I would have got lucky, but I mean, I lost a lot of the gutters that could have easily damaged my solar panels. So that being said, I have really great news because I am really happy with what's going on with the house right now because we now have a backup generator to run the whole house. So my house runs off of solar. On top of that, it does plug into the grid, which obviously you have a tropical storm, the grid doesn't work. If anything happens to my solar, okay, and I always try to plan ahead. So if the inverter goes down, I lose my solar panel, something happens with any of the batteries, it doesn't matter. My house now has a switch where I just hit the switch. My entire house will run off of a generator backup. We're gonna walk down to my house right now. To me, this is really, really important because when our debt happened, I started calling around to all the solar companies because I wanted to see if my house got hit, how fast could I get one of those companies out here to replace the solar panels, right? or get me more solar panels if mine got lost in the wind or if my inverter got fried how fast could they come out here and replace it it was weeks before they would get back to me weeks and it's not their fault 
but a lot of people had issues because of the typhoon where they lost solar panels or they fried their inverter and then on top of that they they told me they had a laundry list just the stack of people that now wanted solar because they didn't have power for a month so they were backed up so for me something could easily go down with the system during a typhoon or any type of tropical storm and then what i wait a month for them to get me what i need that's that's not an acceptable answer for me so anyways let's get in the house right now and go over the generator okay so what we have here is my house obviously <laughs> now that being said if you notice originally we had a power line coming from the pole right here going straight to the house now obviously when it got to the house it would hook into the inverter and then it would power the house because again my house runs off of solar now what we've done is we've actually removed this power line so i had an electrician come in him and his apprentice move the power line take it down and now move it to the garage so inside of the garage we now have a transfer switch Okay, so we are going into the locked shed area, which is really behind the garage, if that makes sense, or at least it's attached to the garage to try to keep everything in one area. So here we have the transfer switch or the secondary switch that they called it. Now what's happening is you have the power line coming in from the pole over there that now comes to the box instead of going right to the house. Next to that, the wire comes out and then runs to the house. So this wire is new this comes straight from the generator so now we have a switch that you can only use one or the other so you don't obviously turn the generator on while you have power from the grid obviously so what you would do is just switch it from whichever one you want to use so now if the power line goes down we don't have any solar tree takes the panels out whatever happens all i have to do is hit that switch over and then push the generator button because that's just the push start generator i can pull if i want to but who wants to do that okay this thing is working awesome i absolutely love it with the generator on i have pretty much everything running um all the fans are running on here we have two air conditioners running we left the fridge door open just to hear it run and everything is working great i really really love it i'm really happy with this uh, i had to shut the doors and the windows on this side of the house because otherwise you could hear the generator so for the purpose of this video i needed to shut them but it works phenomenal very very happy with this really good peace of mind if something happens okay so come here did you did you get any grout on you? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> a little bit, okay. A little bit, that's all right. It'll wash off. Well, that's what happens when the kids ask you if they can help you grout the pool and they get more grout on themselves than they do the pool, but that's all right. <laughs> uh, pool's just about done. So anyways, uh, it's all fun. Okay, so a couple things I just wanted to touch base on because I had a few people ask me um, in the comment section when I was discussing this in, a, in a, a previous video if it was worth bringing a generator over from whatever country you're from. So, I mean, I can't say yes to every country, uh, but I can tell you when it comes down to the states it was absolutely worth it for me to ship a generator over here so when i was over here on vacation and we were building the house all the local filipinos that i had talked to said if you're going to have a generator backup because they knew what was going to buy one in the states and ship it over here so i thought they might just be saying that because they didn't like the quality of the ones um so i wasn't 100 percent sure so i went online i did a lot of research about the local generators and the ones that i could purchase over here i was not happy with the brand names um or the reviews on them or the price of the amount of power i'd get from it or even the decibel level level to tell you the truth they were just too loud and obnoxious um that being said so then when i got to uh, lbc and i asked them if they would possibly ship it because i knew it would be pretty heavy my filipino buddy that works at lbc he looked at me and said yes ship one over i did it i sent it to my house i sent one to my mom's house and my sister's gonna buy one too 
you're not going to like the quality of the ones over there you're going to want to buy one from here just get a good brand that you trust that you could always get parts for so when i say that there's a lot of companies for generators that i like in the states that i wouldn't bring over here and when i say that if you have a random off brand that you bought from home depot or lowe's you may not be able to get a part for it over here so if you think about that it may be popular at home depot but if they don't have it anywhere in the country or they don't have that manufacturer here at all you're probably not going to be able to replace something simple on it so i wouldn't do that um, if you go with something like a honda you go with something like a yamaha there's a few other names they're all over the country i just went with a honda and i know if anything goes down or i need to replace anything it, there's 50 companies that are selling hondas over here so i, I can get the part if i need to um, that's just something that i would really consider um, second little note which is small but just take this into consideration when we got the line moved over to the shed or the garage we had the transfer switch hooked up ran the line over to the house afterwards had everything all ready the generator was even running we tested it then the electrician looked at me and said where is your outlet <laughs> he was confused because r220 outlet over in the states you have a couple different options but the one on the generator was a four plug that twist he had never seen anything like this so he didn't know what to do so i couldn't actually find a plug to go into the outlet for the generator so that is a small problem but i would bring one with you if you if you end up doing a generator so you don't run into the problem i had i just looked at it and smiled and laughed and i didn't really care to tell you the truth i took the faceplate off of the generator and took it apart and then i just replaced the outlet so i just put on an outlet that we have over here which is basically a standard outlet it was just a 30 amper for, so it was made for a large aircon unit um, and then i just replaced it with the four plong four prong that was in there because even if i could order it from lazada or something if it melts or it goes down or it burns or something happens to it i don't want to have a generator with an outlet that i can't use anywhere else for any other reason <laughs> so just keep that in mind um i also had a few other people ask me what size they should get i i can't answer that for you without knowing all the factors of your house so i mean i would look at your current electric bill what kind of appliances you're running and, and try to factor all those in or ask a professional um, i went with a 6500 my solar system is a 6000 and we never use half of that so i'm very comfortable i turned on pretty much everything you know i didn't think about it. i didn't turn on the dryer but anyways pretty much everything else is running and the generator didn't even bog down or fluctuate at all so i'm very happy and comfortable with that um, i have enough gas here right now um, for about eight days i want to get a reservoir tank so i can have enough fuel for a month everyone kind of laughed at me when i said that and thought that was a you know overkill or a little excessive but the fact is when our debt came through a lot of people didn't have power for weeks or over a month so if something happened to my solar panels or my inverter or something like that i don't want to be the guy that has a generator and solar and i'm tied to the grid and i don't have any power right i mean it just doesn't make any sense to me so i'd rather invest into a tank i already looked at one and then uh, put the gas in it even if i only have it a quarter full or you know half full i'm still comfortable with that because we'll know in advance of a tropical storm is coming or a typhoon or something like that and then i can top the tank off that's a lot easier to deal with than filling up a hundred little gas tanks or something like that so i mean either way my generator will comfortably run the house for 10 to 14 hours per tank uh well for the fuel tank that's in the generator and then i have enough for like i said um, over a week but either way i would still like to know that i'm in a situation where i could hold enough fuel for a month if i needed to and i know that sounds excessive a lot of people are going to say oh, that sounds crazy or that's just too much but for me i like to be prepared um and again i because i live in the province there's not simple easy solutions for things like that so me and my family run into an issue or we lose power my in-laws live down the street and longer my sister-in-laws or you know, even the neighbors i'd like to be able to do what i can and not be out of gas <laughs> um anyways so 
All right, I hope I kept this video somewhat entertaining, even though it was more uh, information based. But again, this is really important to me to have backup power living out here where I live. Okay, if I lived in the city, it would be a lot different. Um, if I was in a condo, it would be a lot different. But being out here, this was important to me. I talked to way too many people that had solar and lost their solar panels or their solar panels had a tree on top of them or they're inverter fried and then it didn't matter. So I just like to be prepared and I like to plan. And the fact is for this entire setup, um, for the transfer switch and the breakers, I paid under $40. Uh, the electrician, this is funny, he charged me for two and a half days, him and his apprentice uh, combined. He charged me, well, he told me 2,000 peso. I gave him three because I was just shocked at how much work he did for 2,000 peso, which came out to $52. And I bought the generator during, um, during COVID. So there was a couple companies that were local that thought they were going to go out of business and they were selling everything off at like 50%. So I got the generator for a little under a grand. So for me, I have, even with shipping, $1,200 into this roughly. And I have a generator that will power two of my houses and give me everything I need. It's a really good peace of mind for that, you know, $1,000 or $1,200. So again, you, I mean, if you wanted to, you could always spend three or $400 and get a much smaller one. And that's perfectly fine. The fact is, if you don't have power for a week and you can plug in some light bulbs and a fan, even turn on your fridge every so often, you're going to be really happy. I mean, me, I love where I live. So I'm grateful for what I do have. I'm not complaining about what I don't have, but that's just me. So either way, even a small generator is going to give you a huge comfort level. You're going to feel a lot better knowing that you have it. Um, but if you can upgrade it, then obviously... The more power the better of course right we all know that so anyways thank you for watching and we got some kids over there with grout all over the place uh so i got a lot of cleaning to do so thank you for watching